Welcome to Monday Night Live with Independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, Teresa Harper. I have a couple of hopefully fun cards for you tonight. We're going to do some alcohol marker techniques. So give me a shout and let me know when you're on. Okay, hello Lynette. How's your night going? Hopefully you're having a good night. Starting to get it a little cooled down in my studio. Let's see. Hope I'm showing up. Tonight, we're going to start with a card. Hello, Laura. Uh, that uses the Friends Are Like Seashells bundle of products. And you'll find that in the 2021 to 2022 annual catalog. This is a distinctive stamp set, which means that the images are very detailed. And it has some coordinating dies called the seaside she seashell dies this die set has six um, dies the main one being this very large um, scenery that also coordinates with the seashells 3d embossing folder so we're going to use those tonight and i'll show you how they work in case you don't know and I'm going to do a little bit of alcohol marker technique. Hello, Cynthia. Welcome. Hello, Tracy. Gosh, thanks everyone for joining. And thank you for commenting and letting me know that you're here. I'm going to um, do something I don't normally do. I'm going to go ahead and show you the card that we're going to be making tonight. This is the card right here. <clears throat> and I'll show you some techniques on how to make this happen. I was very pleased with the way it turned out. So... Let's go ahead and get started. Point. Our card base is a piece of balmy blue, and this is a standard A2 card, si card size. It's cut at five and a half by eight and a half and scored at four and a quarter. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start with our card base. And we're gonna take the little stamp, this one that looks a little bit like dots of um, sand. And we're gonna get our balmy, balmy blue ink. And we're just gonna randomly stamp that around our edge. Turn my paper as I go, stamping off my full strength. All right, so there's our card base. And we can set that aside. And then we'll move on to our alcohol technique because that's going to take a little bit of time to dry. <clears throat> OK, 
Okay, so we're going to start with a piece <coughs> of vellum cardstock. And this is a quarter sheet, four and a quarter by five and a half. Excuse me. And we are going to take our alcohol stamp and blends. And this is our color palette. So you need to use. And dark seaside spray is retired, but if you have another blue, you could use that. A misty moonlight, maybe, if you wanted a darker um, blue. And I'm going to start with, I'm going to go light to dark. So I'm going to start with my dark pool party. Actually, I should have turned these the other way. Because I'm going to use the brush tips. Let's just get those all ready to go. And then I'm just going to scribble. In the different areas. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Let's put some down. I'm going to move on to my balmy blue. Put some blue here and there. put in my dark seaside spray and then I'm gonna take my light or my dark my light night of navy the rest of them are all the darks but this one comes out pretty dark if you use the dark Just scribbling, trying to fill in those white areas. Okay, there we are. <clears throat> now, I just have a container of 91% isopropyl alcohol. You have to have at least 90% or this technique won't work. Um, I started doing this technique last night late and I forgot and started with the 70% alcohol and it was a disaster it did not work at all so you have to have at least 90 I have 91% you can just get it at any drugstore and I've poured some into a little container I am actually going to set my piece of vellum on it. Old towel. You can do it on regular paper, but I really want to protect my surface, so I'm going to use the that towel. Okay, I want to get this down where you can see it. Okay, so there we are. We're good. All right. So then I'm going to take just an old um, aqua painter and it doesn't even need to have anything in it because we're not going to use that part. I'm just going to take and dip my um, tip into some alcohol and I'm just going to dot it around, splash it. And you can see how the alcohol is reacting. Okay. And that's what you want. I'm just going to dot that around. And that will get some moving. Then I'm going to take my um, tip and it's wet. And I'm just going to dab a little bit. And then I'm going to wipe it off. I'm just going to dab into the same color. Right now I'm doing the pool party. So I don't want to muddy my colors. 
anywhere I didn't see that the alcohol reacted with the ink the way I wanted yet is what I'm going to do. Okay, so I'm gonna do this kind of slowly so that I can see Is there an echo? Okay, so I'm just gonna dab a little bit here. And I'm trying to stay with the same color so I don't muddy it. Okay, are we good, Cynthia? Okay, can somebody give me a thumbs up if the sound is good? There we go. Okay, thank you, Lynette. All right, so I see some spaces where I don't have some color, so I can still go back and I can add that in. Drop a little bit more alcohol on there. There we go, that's moving. All right, now I see this pool party got a little bit light on me for what I'd like, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna Gribble some more pool party in some areas. And then I'll go back. Just put a little bit of alcohol in there to get that moving. And there we are. Okay. So the next step is I'm going to take, put in those big drops and I dabbed. Now I'm going to take my marker and my aqua painter with some alcohol on it. And I'm just going to smack my aqua painter against the barrel of my marker. And you can see how that is reacting. Okay. Now, I would like just a little bit more color up here. Okay. All right, now I can set this aside to dry. Because we're done with that. And I prepared one ahead of time. So it's all ready to go for the next step. So we're gonna take this. This uses the exact same colors. And now I'm gonna take a little bit of Versamark ink after I run my embossing buddy. Okay, where did I put? My embossing tray is hiding behind my project 
kit here. So take my embossing buddy. And you can, if you don't have an embossing buddy, you can use a dryer sheet. Or you can find these on Amazon. And that'll just take some of the um, static away from where I want to do my embossing. So I'm just going to take a little block and I'm going to take some Versamark ink. And I'm just going to put a drop on here. I won't need a bunch. Then I'm going to take an old blender pen that actually was dry. And I'm just going to get that a little bit wet on the tip. And then I'm going to take my blender pen and I'm going to run it along the edges of some of these seams. where the alcohol made these marks. And I want to make sure that I use the very tip because I don't want my marks to be super wide. How are we doing for lighting? I need to turn a light on. There's so much shadow. Here we go. Hopefully that's better. Okay. I'm just going to draw along here. Okay, and then you probably can't see it, but I'll just pick it up and tip it and see if it's got enough of what I'm looking for there. And because that's a, that Versamark is a sticky ink, I don't have to work too quickly. Okay, let's go with that and see how we like it. We can always go back and add more. Okay. And I'll just keep this one blender pen with my Versamark ink so th that I only use it for that. All right. So because this is a sticky ink, I want to um, clean this off pretty quickly. And I'm just going to do that with my chamois. going to grab my heat and stick powder and this is in the annual catalog and then I'm going to pour that over the ink that I just put on there okay and now you should be able to see where I ran those lines if you couldn't see it before. Okay, I'm just gonna give that a little tap, get the excess off, and then I'm gonna move this out of my way. And I'm gonna grab my heat tool And because I'm doing this on vellum, I'm going to use uh, our heat tool. The Stampin' Up! heat tool has two settings. So I'm going to use setting number one. And with heat and stick powder, 
you need to be very quick. So it's white now, and as soon as you see it start um, turn clear, then you need to stop. Otherwise, you'll lose your stickiness. So hopefully you can see that. Going from white to clear. And I just keep moving. As soon as it turns clear, I'm away from it. Okay, and that all looks good. All right. So now we're gonna take the gilded leafing and I need to get a piece of scrap paper here. And I have a little um, container that I'm gonna work in. Let me turn off my fan real quick, you guys. Otherwise, I'm going to have gilded leafing everywhere because this stuff is really light. So I'm just going to take and put this into my tub. And you can see how light and airy that is. So I'm just going to take and tap that down into the sticky. And this is a full container. You can see how much you get. It doesn't take very much. I'm just gonna put that on there. You gotta be careful when you open it cause it will go everywhere. Okay. I'm just going to take and rub this on our heat and stick powder. Push it in. a little bit more so it'll stick along this edge here and I'm gonna try not to breathe too hard I would suggest that you get a bigger container than what I have when I originally did this I thought oh that'll fit a card size but it really doesn't give you a lot of room to work this container and you can just keep picking up your pieces and you literally just want to rub them into your heat and stick powder okay See if we have any sticky spots. Just work it in. Okay. I'm just going to take and brush off the excess. And 
this is what we're left with. Okay, I'll put all that back in here. And to clean up my area, I'm just gonna take a little piece of Swiffer and wipe that up. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on my vellum. That will get any excess off that I don't want. Okay, I will put that lid on tight. Put this lid on. All right. And there we are. So here is our finished piece. And if you would like to have more gold than that, you can go back and add that if you like. Okay, so we're going to take this piece and we're going to cut it with the large uh, seashell die. We're just going to run that through the big shot just like this. Going to lay that on. Put my top plate on, and then I can run this through. I've got my big shot right over here. Or my stamp and cut and emboss, I should say. is what I have left. I have this beautiful piece. Okay. I got to get this cleaned off because now we're going to take this piece and we're going to put this back into the cut and emboss, but we're gonna take our Seashells 3D embossing folder and we're going to line this up in here. Just like so. Okay. Get those all lined up. And then I'm gonna close the folder. And I'm going to get my embossing plate. And I'm gonna run that through the stamp and cut and emboss. And then we have this beautiful piece. Okay. But this is kind of hard to see, so we want this to pop. And in order to get this to pop, you're going to take a quarter sheet of um, basic white cardstock, and you're going to run that through with the seaside uh die that you just used this one okay same size sheet as your vellum and then you're going to get this and then we are going to take this and add these two together 
so that that will really stand out. Okay. You know, so to stick that, I'm gonna take a piece of a sponge and some Tombow liquid adhesive. Actually, I'm gonna use this one that I already dirtied up with this same technique earlier. And I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna put a little bit of Tombow adhesive in the corner here on my mat. And I'm gonna take my sponge I'm gonna swirl that around and then I'm just going to put that on top of my die cut piece. I don't have to have every single area covered. Okay, so that should work. And we can put that away. And then we're going to take this and add it to our white cardstock. And we're just going to line those areas up, press them into place. And I'm pressing very gently in case I need to move. I don't want to give it a good hard press until I'm ready to secure it down. Okay, and that looks good to me. So then I'm going to go on the back and I'm just going to give that a good press. Okay, and there you have it. Then we're gonna take our card base. <clears throat> and actually, I'm gonna go in on this card base with that spotted in stamp in the balmy blue. And I'm gonna do a little bit more stamping inside. Okay, that'll give that just a little bit of added texture on the inside as well. Okay, so now we're ready to adhere this to our card. So again, I'm gonna take some liquid glue. I'm just gonna go into these bigger areas. Put a little bit on these wispies. You don't need a lot. If you can see it, it's enough. And you don't have to hit every single little piece. Just make sure you get the outside edges there. Okay. That looks good. And now we're going to just lay this down on our card. And now that really pops. We've got all those gold accents. Okay. And you're gonna take a scrap of Knight of Navy and you're going to use the Tasteful Labels die. And you're going to cut this piece for a frame. And I've already done that. And then you're going to take... We're going to do some stamping. Okay. So we've got our label. I'm going to take a piece of uh, basic white and we're going to grab some ink pads and 
going to go ahead and open these up. Get my alcohol markers out of the way. Pool party. Move this. And we've got some Night of Navy. Okay. Along with that balmy blue. So these are this is our color palette. So we need to take the sentiment from the Friends Are Like Seashells that says happy birthday to my beautiful friend. And we're gonna stamp that in balmy blue. Okay, I'm gonna stamp that just in center, doesn't matter, because we're gonna cut that out. We just need to make sure that we've left ourselves enough room for the die cut. Okay, this is how it's gonna go, so we're good. Now our other images we'll wanna put above that. So we're gonna take the seashell. We're gonna do this in Sahara sand. And as long as I stay in that area, I'll be good now. Okay, so we've got that. I'm going to take um, the sand dollar. I'm going to stamp that down. And then we're going to stamp the starfish. All right. So we've got those three images. <clears throat> now, from the painted poppy stamp set, I'm using this little splotch. It is also a distinctive stamp set. And I'm going to ink this up in the Sahara sand. And I'm going to stamp it off. And then I'm going to stamp my sand dollar. And now my sand dollar is colored. Okay. So then I'm going to take uh, from the Friends are like seashells. There's this little sploochy thing. And we're going to ink this in pool party. And then I'm going to stamp this off and I'm going to stamp it off again. And I'm going to line it up with this seashell and I'm going to stamp that down. Okay. While we're here, We're going to go ahead and stamp our inside and our envelope. So we're going to grab this seashell again, ink that up. I'm going to take the splooshy, stamp off and stamp off. And then I'm going to stamp that down on my envelope. Okay. Then I will need a mask. And I've already cut one of those. I'm gonna mask that up and I'm gonna take my sand dollar and I'm gonna ink that right there. And leaving my mask in place I'm going to go back with the splooshy from the Painted Poppies. And I'm gonna stamp that off. And I'm gonna stamp that down. Okay. And then, oh, need to get my thing moved out of the way. I've got all that gook from the Tombow glue on my silicone mat. Okay, there we go. Then we're going to take the spotty stamp again. We're going to clean that off real fast if I can figure out what I did with my... Oh, where did I put that down at? Oh my goodness. Right here. 
Oh, thanks for the likes. Oh, thanks, Laura. I'm glad you like that technique. Okay, so I've taken the spotty stamp and I'm going to uh, put it in the Sahara sand. And I'm just going to put some ink down here, just like that. And then I can go ahead and remove my mask. And that's done. And I did the same thing. I did the inside of the card already, but I used this same technique for the inside of the card. Okay. So we have one last um, image that needs to be filled in. And we're going to do that with the balmy blue. And there's another little splooshy stamp right here in the friends are like seashells and I'm going to ink that up in the balmy blue and again I'm going to stamp off and stamp off and then I'm just going to give that a little bit okay so this is all done I'm going to close up those ink pads move those out of the way and then we're going to need to cut those okay so these three images all have dies this one does not have a die you can cut it out with the large um, seashell but it's more trouble that way because it doesn't cut it completely so I'm just gonna take my paper snips And I'm going to cut that out. Just going to fussy cut it. Okay. It's a pretty easy image to fussy cut. Just leaving a little tiny bit of a white border. That'll draw your eye away so you won't see how good I cut or how badly I cut. And I'm gonna take this image and I'm gonna take the seashell 3D folder and on the uh, of this so here's the Stampin Up logo I'm just gonna set that into the top like so now I had trouble keeping mine in place it didn't want to stay I got it in there and by the time I ran it through the machine it didn't want to stay so I just took a piece of post-it tape and now it won't move and then I can run it through the die cut machine Okay, and then this is the image that we have. So now it's cut, stamped, and embossed, just like that, All right? Now these ones I've already um, die cut, Although I did want to show you a little trick with this one. So let me run this through the die cut machine really quickly. Because I wanted to show you how I gave this one some depth and dimension. Now you do have to, this one does have a definite way it needs to go. And one of these days I'll get my mark so I find it the first time. Okay, and we'll get the top plate and we'll run that through.
All right. Okay. So I've already pre-cut those others. So we don't need to worry about those. Put that die away. I'm gonna take my stamp and pierce mat with this. And I'm gonna take my stylus tool. For my Simply Scored, and there's two tips, okay? And on the front side of this, I'm gonna gently go along the, side, the uh, seams or the markings here in the center, okay? Just gonna run that along there. I'm doing it gently. Okay, then I'm gonna flip this over. Now I have it marked. I'm going to take the bigger tip because now I know right where to go and I'm going to run those through this way and I'm going to push a little bit harder. And that one wants to keep moving on me. Okay. And I'm just going to move along those lines I made. Okay, and then when I turn this back over, my starfish has quite a bit of depth and dimension. Okay. So we have that piece. Now let's go ahead and grab our other pieces. But I've already I cut here. All right. And these are what we need to finish putting our card together. All right. So here we go. First of all, we're going to take and add this sentiment piece to our die cut. And we're going to do that with some Stampin' Dimensionals. And I'm going to keep my stamp and dimensionals away from the left end. Okay. Because I need to be able to tuck some things under there. I'm going to add this to the center here. Like so. And then I'm going to add this piece to my card base. And I'm just going to add that with some liquid glue. I'm going to put it just a little bit to the right. Now I'm going to look to see where I have um, all the gilded leafing and determine exactly where I want this to go. So I'm covering up the least amount. Okay, so I'm gonna put this about right here. I'm gonna press that down. Okay. So I'm gonna take my starfish or my sand dollar, and I'm gonna tuck him in here. And he's going to pop up just a little. So I'm going to take a Stampin' Dimensional. I'm going to add that to this edge. And I'm going to slide that on in. Okay. Whoops, I think I put it on the wrong side from what I really wanted. All right, so I want this part sticking out, so I need to put my dimensional over here. No, I did it wrong again. Silly me. You'd think I'd get it right after I messed it up the first time. I wanna put my stamp and dimensional where that little 
book is. Okay. Oops. Okay, so then I can just put this in here like this. I'm going to add this seashell here. And the starfish is going to go right up here. Like so. Okay. So for the starfish, I'm going to use some mini dimensionals. And I'm going to cut those in half. stick that on two of the legs. Okay. And then I'm going to put just a touch of glue on these two, because they're gonna lay up against the sentiment strip, like so, okay. Then I need a dimensional Down here on this seashell. And I might want another one right there. And that finishes off my dimensional strip. Yoo-hoo! Okay, then I'm going to put just a little bit of glue up here on the top. And stick that to my sentiment strip. Don't want to cover up my sentiment. All right. Now for the finishing touch on this. We're going to grab some of the opal rounds. gonna add just a couple of these about three I'm gonna take one big one and put that up here and then a small one we'll stick that right in there and then one more small one I think right down here Okay, and then here's that inside of our card that I did using that same technique on the envelope. Add that to the inside of our card. And now our card is finished with a coordinating envelope. All right. So what do you ladies think of that? Let me put that down a little bit so you can see it better while I give a quick clean. Hey. I have another card prepared if you are interested in hanging around or we can save it for another night. Tell me what you would like. This one was kind of technique intensive, so it took a little bit of extra time. Oh, thanks, Tracy. Thanks, Laura. Glad you gals like that. and get 
those things back in their box. Get them out of the way. All right. Okay, our second card, I've done quite a bit of the work ahead of time. So we can just breeze through putting it together if you like. Okay. All right. So I pre-colored everything so you won't have to watch me color. We're going to start with a card base in soft succulent. We are using the stamp and die bundle Snow Wonder for this card. And this was available in the um December, the August to December mini last year in 2020, in 2020, and uh, it is coming back as a fan fave in the July to December mini catalog 2021. So it still will be available, and it is still available as a bundle. Okay, so that's the stamp set we're going to be using. We've got a piece of Evening Evergreen, and I've cut this with the largest of the Scallop Contour dies. Okay. I've also cut a piece of Whisper White, um, which I've already stamped and colored for the inside of our card. Okay, so this will be the inside. And then you're going to need a piece of um, Whisper White, and that's just to stamp on, okay? So, let's go ahead, put this up here. Okay. Oh, you also need a piece of Whisper White that is cut at, and I hope I cut this already. Um, three and three eighths. Yep, three and three eighths by four and eleven sixteenths. Now you can cut this at four and three quarters, but I find that I like it to be at um, four and eleven sixteenths, which is just one tick mark below four and three quarters on your trimmer. Okay, so this will fit then. Um, very nicely inside your uh, evening evergreen scallop piece. Okay, if you cut it at the four and three quarters, you'll have just a little less hanging over at the top and bottom than you will on the sides. So it's your preference. So let's set that aside because we're going to go ahead and do our stamping. So we're going to take the trees, the evergreen trees, and we're going to stamp those in evening evergreen. Okay, we're going to do some stamping off and full strength. So I'm going to start with my trees and I'm going to stamp off and then I'm going to start up here in the upper left corner and I'm going to stamp those and then I'm going to ink again and I'm going to stamp off and I'm going to move those down just a touch and I'm going to stamp again All right and then one last time, I'm going to stamp here. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on. I wanted to. No, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to get this, and I'm going to go full strength, and I'm going to stamp right here between the trees. Right there. Full strength. Okay? And that's what I have. Now, on a scrap piece of Whisper White, or Basic White, okay, 
I'm going to stamp two more trees sets. And then I'm going to die cut those out. Okay. And then I need to stamp my snowman. I'm going to stamp my snowman in the basic gray. Now this, because this is a distinctive set, it's when you ink it up, you're going to see areas that are darker than others, and that's the way it's supposed to be. Okay, and then we're just going to stamp this down. All right. Then I'm going to use our stamp and blends to color that up. I've already done the coloring, but I did want to show you how I did the um, uh, scarf on the snowman. This is how I colored him up. But I want to show you how I did that. So I took my light and dark cherry cobbler and I started with the dark. And I'm going to use my silicone mat because then it'll stay wet a little longer. And I'm going to take the bullet tip and I'm just going to do dots of cherry cobbler in these little uh, stitches on the scarf. I'm just going to go down like that. Okay. All right. Then I'm going to go back with my light cherry cobbler. And I'm basically, I'm just going to dot all over my scarf with the tip. I don't want to really rub those darker spots out because I want it to look like the light is hitting the knitted area and giving it depth and dimension. It also makes it look a little bit more realistic, like it truly is fabric or um, yarn. Okay. Okay, so that's how I did the scarf. And here is my finished snowman, complete with Wink Estella. I used soft suede for the branches. I put a little bit of pool party. Oh, and I was gonna show you that too. Just my, with my pool party, I went around just the artist areas and I went in the same direction. I just did some little slash marks in the same fashion that the artist did it. And I made sure that I kept turning my paper so that I was going in the same direction as the artistic marks, okay? And that's how I got the snowman body done. And then I went back and I took my um, colorless lifter so that the pool party wasn't quite as dark. All right. Are there any other questions on the coloring? Okay. Okay, one more tip on the trees. I wanted to put Wink Estella on my trees, but if you put Wink Estella on your trees, um, Typically, your ink will run, 
okay? So I want the Wink of Stella on here, but I don't want my green, my green to run into my snow. So I'm gonna take my Wink of Stella, and instead of coloring with it, I'm going to dab. Trying to stay in the snow area. Okay, and I'm going to wipe off my tip frequently just in case I get any green. It also helps if you stamp and really let your ink dry. And then you can get your snow to glisten. Just dabbing. We're not painting, we're just dabbing, okay? And then I'm sure you won't be able to see that in the light, but you have just a little bit of sparkle on there, okay? And I've done that on the trees that I stamped and die cut out. We can move these items out of the way. We're going to add this card piece right here. We're gonna add this to our scallop contour. Our, yeah, here we go. Put this down right in here. Center that up. All right. And then we'll take our trees. Now here, I only want one tree. So I'm gonna take my paper snips. Except that didn't put them back where they belong. And I'm just gonna cut this off. I just want the big tree. So I'm just going to give that a little trim. These are not my favorite scissors by any means. Okay. I just had my paper snips and do you think I can find them? No. Okay. So I'm going to take and put this tree here and this one here, I think. I'm going to audition this, and before I do anything else, I'm going to take my sentiment and stamp it down here in the corner. And this sentiment comes from a new stamp set called Joyful Life, and I'm using the Season's Greetings. This will be available in the July to December mini going live to customers on October 4th. It was the best sentiment that I could put down there in that small little area. So I'm going to take and ink that up in Cherry Cobbler. And I'm going to stamp that right down here, hopefully straight. All right. Okay. Then I can take my trees, take a little bit of liquid glue, put those here. Take a little bit of liquid glue on the bottom of this. I'm leaving the tops unglued so that I get a little bit of added dimension. Then I'm going to take my snowman and I'm 
going to pop that up with dimensionals. And I'm not going to put any dimensionals on his head. So I've already got some tree depth there. So I'm just going to leave that hanging. Put my snowman back on here. Come on. Put that up a little bit. All right, and then we're ready to add this to our card base. And our card base is a standard A2 card base, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And we're gonna take some stamp and seal. Add this to the front. I love how the soft succulent, soft succulent complements the evening evergreen so beautifully. Okay, so then for the inside, um, I took the stamp. This stamp is also in that Snow Wonder. And this greeting is in there. So I took and colored this with soft succulent a little bit of flirty flamingo and the light and dark cherry cobbler. Okay. And we're going to add that to the inside of our card. And then this card is finished. And for the envelope, I took those uh, snow covered trees and stamped them on the front. And then on the flap, there's a set trio of snowflakes that's also in the Snow Wonder set, and I put those on the flap. So there we have it. Those are our projects for tonight. I'll bring this first card back in so you can see that again. Hope everybody was inspired by that and hopefully you'll be able to create something of your own with something similar that you might have all right thank you this hat oh the color of this hat Tracy I used three colors I colored with um, light and dark smoky slate and a little bit of basic black oh this is evening evergreen so these are the ones that i used to get that blend for the hat ah oh, thanks tracy i appreciate that all right everybody well, I will see you back here again, hopefully, next Monday night. I'm making another trip to the ophthalmologist tomorrow, so we'll see how things go and where I'm going to be. Um, things are a little up in the air until I get this eye thing sorted out. Okay? But if I'm not going to be here, I'll let you know. If you don't hear differently, plan on next Monday night at 7.45. Good night, everybody, and thank you for joining me.